Welcome back to Nightline. We are glad that you stayed with us, and I hope there are some of you who are just joining us. We've had a lot of good things going on, and we've got more. Amen. We have with us tonight Pastor Norman Black from the Belton Church of God, mm -hmm. and Andy Davis has been singing for us and some really meaningful songs and, and doing a great job. Also, our prayer partners are here. So if you have a prayer request, you could just call the number on your screen and a prayer partner will be happy to pray with you. And they'll also be passing those along with us and we'll have another prayer time before the program's over, the Lord willing. And uh, so we still have a lot of things going on. And right now, Andy Davis is gonna sing for us again, Chain Breaker. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker if you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Mm -hmm. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. But there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way. feel it somebody testify if you believe it you believe it you receive it, receive it. if you can feel it somebody testify testify talking about a God tonight who can break chains. Amen. Whatever chains are holding you back, holding you down, He can break them. He will break them if you'll let Him. Just ask Him to, say, Lord, break them. Amen. And He'll break those chains Amen. off of you. Amen. You Praise can be God. free right now. That's true. Tonight, That's right. you can be free. Well, we have Pastor Norman Black with us, and I want you just to continue on with what you're doing because it's good. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, when God brings us together like this in these settings, 
he arranges the songs and he arranges the conversation mm -hmm. so that those that are listening can be encouraged and they can do exactly what you said earlier, begin to cry out to God, Amen. begin to call upon him. Yes. I'm going to switch gears here and I'm going to go to the New Testament and, and continue this thought about I can't, I can't Titus, okay? Uh, Zacharias was a man who was a priest. He worked in the house of God. And he, the Word of God says in Luke that he was well advanced in years, which means simply he was old, okay? <laughs> He's old. And the angel appeared before him, and the angel that appeared before him was Gabriel. Yeah. And Gabriel himself said, I stand in the very presence of God. Mm -hmm. That's what he told Zacharias. But he told Zacharias, hey, you and Elizabeth are going to have a son. And that old inflammation of <laughs> I can't Titus rose up inside of him and said, how can this be? Because we're well advanced in years. We're beyond the childbearing years. And Gabriel said, you know, I, I like the way he looked at him and says, you know, hey, look, I came from God himself to give you this message. You will be mute, not able to speak until this baby is born yeah. because of what happened. And sure enough, he was mute and, until the baby was born. And whenever they asked him, uh, about the baby's name, he had to get a writing tablet. He wrote his name as John, and immediately he was able to speak again. Mm -hmm. But that infection took charge inside the church. <laughs> yes, it okay, did. inside the very place that he was ministering unto God, it rose up with inside of him. Mm -hmm. During that time period, Gabriel made another trip to another young lady by the name of Mary. And Mary he came to her and he told her that she was highly favored and she was blessed among all the women. And Gabriel told Mary, a teenage girl, that she was going to bear a son, the son of God, and she was going to call his name Jesus. I can't Titus, rose up. <laughs> hey, I'm a teenage girl. I've never been with a man. I'm engaged. How can this be? And Gabriel explained to her what was going to happen. And the word says to us that Mary quickly got over her I can't Titus. And she said, she said, as uh, she heard this, she said, be it so to me. Be it according to your word. Let it happen. And Mary got over that. And, and as she got over it, she was able to move on. Each one of these examples in the Old Testament and the New Testament were people that were just like us. Mm -hmm. They had fears, they had doubts, they had concerns, yeah. different things going on in their life, just like today that we're in the same boat, same situation. But in every situation, when they took God at His Word and they began to believe in their heart and began to move forward underneath the power of the Spirit of God and the Word of God, God did great and awesome things yeah. in each one of their lives. Yeah. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to tag that what happened to us in August of 2021. When we began as a church to look at the plans and look at the way that we needed to repair the church and we began to gather that information about the cost and that cost was $150,000. I didn't have $150,000. <laughs> I did not have $150,000. And I, I, I had never raised $150,000 before either so I, I was sort of, I had one man, as he came out, he was giving me his quote as he was telling me the things that needed to be done. He said, Preacher, I looked at your face and your face was like, you know, the white was draining out of your face. Like, what am I going to do? Well, I went to God and God gave me a plan. And it was the same plan that I found in the book called The Bible. <laughs> with Moses, when God gave Moses the plan to build a portable tabernacle in the wilderness, and told him how to make all the furniture with all the gold and all yeah. the silver and all the brass and everything that the bronze, everything that he was supposed to get, the badger skins and all the dyes and everything. And Moses, after he finished writing down all this plan, he said, how am I going to get this? There's no hardware store around here. There's no Walmart. God said, go to the people. And that's what God birthed in my spirit. He said, go to the people. 
So that's what I did. I brought to the people of our congregation and I told them, I laid it out here and said, this is $150,000 that we need to raise and we need to uh, get started on this quick. And, and before we could even get out of the church, part of that 150000 was uh, a 16000 that was for an air conditioning unit for the gym because it went out before we could move. You know, so, <laughs> so we had to get it up first. You know, so, so we had a lot of things to get together, but God said, go to the people. Yeah. So I did. I presented them a letter that they could begin to share with people. And, they, and, and the people rose up. They had talent. We have one lady who was an artist, okay? Um, uh, and as she, as she took her talent, she began to train people and teach people on crafts. And she used her talent in that area. And she was able to gain some money uh, through her talents. Another lady was hospitality. And she developed a, a program for her talent. And she raised a, a nice sum of money. And another lady had connections right. with some businesses. In a place in Anderson auctioned off a piece of wood and, and gave to the church the monies from the wood. Another lady had a business and she said, I'm going to give you a percentage of the profit that I have earned off of my business. You know, we had different people that had different contacts in the congregation. Yeah. This thing began to grow and blossom. OK, now me, me, I can't tell I can't tie this rose up inside of me. OK, sure. uh, as a pastor facing one hundred fifty thousand dollar program. And I said, wow, how, how, how? And every time that I would try to go and, and see about getting a loan, God stopped it mm -hmm. because God was wanting to do something yeah. that was beyond the church members, that was beyond me, okay? He was wanting us to see Him. And by the time that final bill came due in April of this year, okay, God had given us $150,000 <laughs> plus to be able to get it all done and it was all paid for. It was Him that provided for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, if I would have stepped back and stayed in my Icantitis, okay, yeah. we'd probably still be in the gym today and we'd probably still sitting there going at probably 10,000 saying we need 140 still to go. But God provided for us. It was all God. It was uh, it was amazing the different things. And God would even send me words of encouragement through a man in the community that I only met one time. And wow. he would call me and, and tell me stories about how God had helped him and his family through financial situations yeah. and crises and, and, and things of this nature. And I was, I, I never met the man until finally after we had several conversations, he came by the church and I got to meet him. Yeah. But they were words of encouragement just at the right time. And that's what God does in our listeners and our viewers' lives. Yeah. He comes at the right time. And I want people to know this, okay? And I wrote it down here, and I want them to hear and understand that they can be saved. Yeah. God's yeah. Word says, Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I don't care what the enemy's been telling them. I don't mm -hmm. care how strong mm -hmm. the I can't ism is rising up inside of them. They can be saved yes. if they'll call upon the name of the Lord and confess mm -hmm. their sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. They can love again. They can give again. They can carry on. I have it written, they can try again. You mentioned that earlier. And, and they can take the high road in the situation that's calling them to get down into the ditch and fight. They can take the high road and avoid that. They can let go of the I can'tism and just yeah. say, okay, God, I'm letting you handle it and let God, okay? They can step up. They can start over again. No matter if that job did close, they can start over again. They can yeah. press on. They can. I don't care how bad it how heavy the load is, they can press on. They can forgive. Yes. There's some that needs just to say, I'm going to forgive. Mm -hmm. They say, but preacher, I can't, I'm, I can't forgive. Yes, you can. That's right. Christ That's forgave. Christ on the cross, when they were making fun of him, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, and the people at the foot of the cross making fun of him, he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not whether if Christ can, so can we, okay? Yeah. We can change. We can go back to church. 
Amen. I want to tell. I want to get. A, hey, look. You know this. This COVID mess is behind us now. You can get back in church. Okay, <laughs> that's the first thing they hit was the church and said you can't go to church. Yeah. But I want to tell you this again. I go back to what Paul wrote. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Everything I just listed there. Loving again, forgiving again, salvation. We can do it if we just step out and begin that journey. Paul said also, God has not given us a spirit of fear. That defeats that old disease, that old foul infection. Mm -hmm. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound Mm -hmm. mind. And then he goes on and says, we can cast our cares upon him. That heavy burden that we've been carrying It's time to let it go. It's time to cast it on Jesus. Let him carry it. Mm -hmm. It was never meant for us to carry. He carries it for us and we can trust him. And we are the children of God and we can overcome the enemy. We can overcome the, I can't Titus. Because greater is him that is in us than he that is in the world. And Philippians 4, 19 says, My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That area of finance that we've been struggling with. We can have wisdom to do things that will help us to be able to be stronger financially. And finally, the Psalms have said it best. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yes. The Lord, the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Amen. I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to say I can't anymore. No. Right. I love the story about the little boy. Have you asked <laughs> for my help yet? Yeah. God is saying that to those that are listening tonight, That's those right. who are watching tonight. God is exactly saying that to them in their rooms, in their, wherever they're watching this, by the computer, what of television. Yeah. He's saying, ask me. That's what I did a year and two weeks ago. God, what am I going to do? I need your help. And God came on the scene and God showed himself to us. And God did a marvelous work. And I, I, I'm just, I, I can't give anything more to say to the people. Trust God. Lean on him. Let him help you. He will deliver you. He will, he will save you. I don't care what the enemy said. He will save you if you will call upon him. And those that are in drug addictions and and they're in rehab and things of that nature, they've already started on the journey. Keep going. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Our God is, you know, sometimes we think, well, God doesn't notice me. He does notice you. Yes. He notices me. When I teach a ladies Bible study and we were talking, it was like, um, God, you know, he knows about the grass he knows about the flowers. He yes, knows he about the little birds. And you think God doesn't notice you? Of course he does. He loves you. Yes. Andy's going to sing a song for us, Me on Your Mind. I've read the words in red How you leave the night Find the one missing Feels like that was written With me on your mind And the prodigal son who ran Leaving his home behind The part where the father came running to meet him Did you say that with me on Who am I that the king of the world would give one single thought about my broken heart? Who am I that the God of all grace wipes the tears from my face and says, come as you are? You paid the price. You took the cross. Me on your mind. 
Just knowing you call me your child It's flooding my soul with unspeakable hope Thank you, Lord, that it's me on your mind Who am I that the King of the world Would give one single thought about my broken heart Who am I that the God of all grace Wipes the tears from my face and says Come as you are You paid the price You took the cross sorrows erased and when I stand before you I'll find all along it was me on your mind who am I that the king of the world would give one single thought about my broken heart who am I that the God of all grace wipes the tears from my face and says his mind. Amen. He loves you. Amen. He loves you. He cares for you. Scott read this scripture, I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me from his holy hill. Selah, I lay down and slept. I awoke for the Lord sustained me. That can be you tonight. You may say, are you kidding? I hadn't had a good night's sleep in ages. I've been so upset. You don't have to be. Cry out to God. I cried to the Lord with my voice. Cry to the Lord with your voice tonight. Ask him to help you. He wants to. He sees where you are. He wants you to ask him. We have a lot of requests. Um, and there's a friend of mine who's having some family problems. And um, I want us to remember her in this prayer too. Um, and here is somebody who wants divine contacts, uncommon favor, <laughs> divine alignment, signs, miracles, and all of those, that's what they want. And there are others, too, who need a prayer for uh, stomach problems and one from depression. So many, so many. But you know what? Our God sees each one individually. He doesn't mm -hmm. see it as a group. He sees you as individuals. And, Scott, I want you just to pray over all these requests. Amen. Father, tonight as we come before you, we do bring this lady to you, Father, who's been having problems. Lord, this friend, God, I pray your Holy Spirit would intervene. And Lord, that she would begin to see the things taking place, Father, and things moving out of the way and new things becoming into her life, Father, into that family, Lord. Restore, refresh, renew. God, I pray for others here, Lord, who, who need you in a greater way, Father. So many requests, Father. Even one I was reading said, Lord, won't you to, want us to pray for her that you would forgive her of her sins. So Father, Lord, right now, if she'll cry out to you that you will heal her, you will set her free, you will save her soul, and that she can know without a shadow of a doubt that you are God and that you love her and that she can live for you, Father, in Jesus' name. God, we thank Jesus. you for that. We thank you for all of them. We love you. We give you praise. 
give you glory, give you honor for all that you're doing in our lives, Father, because we ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. 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 You can cry out. It doesn't matter if you have done terrible things and you feel like you're a terrible person. We all were. Amen. But God, (laughs) but God. So it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. You can cry out to God. Amen. You can ask God to save you tonight. That's right. And He will. He will. Because He sees you and He sees where you are. He sees where you've been. And you know what? He sees where you can be. Amen. As a matter of fact, He sees where you will be. And that can be right in His arms. Just ask Him. Just ask Him for yourself to come into your heart, into your life. Say, Lord, I don't want to have anything to do with the sinful life anymore. I want to get rid of it. Wash me. Cleanse me. Let me come to you and know you and walk with you. He wants us to walk with him. Just coming to him, that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning. Jesus wants us to learn how to walk according to his word. In our Bible study, we've been studying about the teachings of Jesus. He said, you need to know. You need to know my teachings, and you need to teach them to others. So if you've learned about Jesus Christ, you're responsible to teach that to somebody else. Help them to know how they can live a life that is so full of the Spirit that the Spirit will lead us, lead us, lead us into the path he wants us to go. And then he's right there with us to comfort us. If it's a little rocky, sometimes we do walk in rocky places, but that's okay too, because the Lord will be with us. He'll take care of us. Oh, I hope that if you started this program with us and you said, I can't do it. (laughs) I just can't do it. I hope your mind's changed. I hope your heart's changed. And I hope you know you can do it. Just ask God and he'll help you. We love you. Bless you from Nightline.